Hello folks and welcome back to Sew Out of I Sew, or welcome if you're new, my name is Jess and this is my channel all about sewing, dressmaking and all things stitch related and I am so, so excited for this video guys, it's going to be so fun, I can't wait. Um, so lots of you, all of you will know the fabulous Tamlin sewn on the time and you will know that Tamlin and I have been friends for a few years and we have collabed more than once and it's always great fun. So I'm really excited to tell you we're doing it again. It's gonna be great. Uh, I love Tamlin's channel. I love her account. I love her makes. And she's also just an absolute joy. I loved having her on the podcast in season one as well. She's just brilliant. Go listen to that episode, by the way, all about sewing events. If you haven't heard it, it's a great one. Um, but she's all around a brilliant person. And back when I did my make nine in, oh, I wanna say December, January. When, when do we do make nine? My God, my brain. Um, January, when I set my make nine, the chalk and not shea is on there. And I know it's a um, pattern Tamlin has been wanting to make as well. So we messaged each other and we were like, do you want to collab? Let's do it. Oh my God, let's do it. And we were like, okay, right, right. We'll do it in April because we'll have plenty of time between now and then. And then life happened. And then we were like, should we, should we do June? Let's, let's do June. <laughs> That's a better idea. Let's do June. Um, so it's, I'm so glad it's come to fruition. I'm so glad to be making this. The Chalk and Not Shea has been on my bucket list for a while um, and that's why I put it on my Make 9 this year to really make sure I had a go with it because it's been on my Christmas list like two years running and no one has got it for me. By the way, does anyone have this problem where their relatives don't get them sewing stuff? Like even, it's on the list guys, I'd get it if they were like, I don't know what to get you so I don't get you anything, fair enough. But like it's on, I do a Christmas list, it's on there and like without fail no one buys me anything sewing related and I'm like, sad. Um, <laughs> So, side note. Anyway, I finally got hold of the Shea pattern. I actually bought it in the Me Made May, no, Me Made May sale, there we go, <sighs> honestly. Um, and I was like, right, there's a discount on it, let's do it, let's make it happen. And I am so excited, guys. So, the Chalk and Not Shea looks like this, if you haven't seen it before. Uh, it is, there are two views, so there's either a without button zip at the back, sort of continuous princess seam front with the sleeves um, or without sleeves you can both you can do both views with or without sleeves or there's view b which is what i'm making again i've put the views on screen here and um, with the buttons all the way down the front because i really like the way that looked now chalk and notch they really have my heart in a lot of ways i love them as a pattern brand i love the style of their patterns but also contentious i know I think they have the best instructions of any indie pattern. And you guys know I hate instructions. But the chalk and notch ones, they're great. I'm, I'm about it, I love it. So, for the chalk and notch shea, I was a bit like, what do I sew it with? What size do I make? All that kind of stuff. Um, and I came to the conclusion, I feel entirely comfortable not twirling it. And that's for three core reasons. Firstly, the chalk and notch block is basically exactly my body measurements. I, I fit the chalk and notch block really, really well, just out the box. So I'm really happy with that. Secondly, it's a princess seam, which already always sits better on my body. I have the type of body for princess seams. Darts can look a bit pointy on me and it's a bit weird, uh, but princess seams really are my vibe and I find it much easier to know exactly, even when I'm cutting out a princess seam, if I'm like, oh, that's gonna fit, that's not gonna fit. Like I know just by looking if it's gonna work for me and I know it's just a nicer shape on me, so I feel more comfortable again that I'm gonna get a positive result. And thirdly, I would say, it's pretty much in my wheelhouse. That's that's what I would say, it's, it's in my wheelhouse. Like. It's a princess seam, it's a button down the front, it's a longer dress, but it's it's gathered, it's tiered. Now, I, I am nervous because the Closet Core NYX promised me it would be like this and it just wasn't and it did not work on me at all. But the Chalk and Notch Shea, I've seen so many beautiful versions. And again, as I've said, the Chalk and Notch patterns fit me really well. So I'm hoping it's gonna be a success. Now, I'm gonna tell you a little bit about the pattern. I have notes, guys, I wrote stuff down. Can you believe it? So, the Chalk and Notch Shea is available from a size zero to a size 30. I should say we're not sponsored, by the way. Um, it's just, I think it's useful for me to start telling you information about the pattern, not just assume you know it. I'll link it below, obviously. Um, so a size zero in this instance is a 25 inch waist and it goes up to a 49 inch waist in the size 30. 
Now, let me tell you exactly why Chalk and Notch make me happy. So, they put, and please take note, other pattern companies, they put the high bust in when they put their different cup sizes. So there's four cup sizes available, an A to a D, which is a dressmaking A to a D. And that means the D is a four inch difference between your high bust and your full bust. Now that for me is my standard, that's what I need. But lots of patterns just put bust B cup, bust D cup, and they don't tell you the high bust and it drives the up the wall. Whereas Chalk and Notch have a lovely detailed size chart. I'm gonna stick it there actually because it is useful just to see the examples. So you pick your high bust and then you pick the cup size that is relevant. So for me, I'll be making a size two. And that means the high bust is 31, which is what I am. Then I will go with the D cup. So that goes up to 35. Again, pretty much exactly right. I'm about 35 and a half. So that's perfect, really. And then a 26 inch waist and a 36 inch hip. That's literally the shape of my body. So already we're on to a winner. Now, in terms of finished measurements, that means the bust will be 36. So there's an inch of ease, which is perfect. And then there's two inches of ease on the waist. So it'll be 28 inches. For the hips, it's a gathered skirt, we'll be fine. To make this beautiful thing, you will be amazed to hear, and I know it's, it's being a collab is such a good influence on me. I read the instructions before I bought my fabric and I actually bought the amount of fabric it told me I need. Well, I did and I didn't, I'll tell you in a sec. So I bought, it told me I need three meters to do the version with the sleeves. So I went shopping at so much more and I got an adorable thank you note um, for ordering. And I love a note from Jess to Jess. It always makes me happy. I got this stunning cotton poplin. And I know, again, I know what you're thinking, cotton poplin, but you're a viscose girl. And also the podcast listeners amongst you will notice it's blue. Not only that, the background is navy. Guys, who am I? What is happening? Also, I am losing my voice, so please do bear with. Um, Cause yeah, I'm really croaky today. So why have I broken my pretty much ban on blue? Well, for a couple of reasons. Firstly, because of the light blue flowers, I'm gonna hold it up like there so you can see it, and the little red ones and little green bits, I feel like it's it's broken up enough that it's gonna work with my skin tone, it's not gonna make me look as matronly. Um, also the ditzy print worked really well. But also, it's because it's one big dress. I have nothing in my wardrobe that will go with navy if I wear it on its own, like navy trousers or a navy top, that's not gonna happen. And also I hate it, I absolutely hate it. It looks beautiful on other people, but I look horrendous. However, with one big dress with a very light print really as the focus and then a darker background, but with a whole sort of tiered dress, buttons, etc., I think that's gonna look really pretty and it won't make me look like a big sort of matronly monolith. Um, Sam keeps joking she's going to buy me a matron's cap, um, which she's not allowed to do. Um, but I think it will break my blue curse a little bit. That doesn't mean I'm going to start sewing loads of blue, but I am excited. I saw this fabric and thought it looked really nice. It's also, it is cotton poplin, and there are two reasons I've gone with cotton poplin. Firstly, this pattern has structured sleeves, pin tucks, button plackets, princess seams, there's a lot of construction going on. And what I would really like to be able to do is press my pin tucks so they're so sharp with the iron that I can just sew along them. Can I do that with viscose? Yes, but it's an absolute pain. Can I do it incredibly easily with cotton? Yes, yes I can, it's gonna be so much easier. I just thought, since I'm tackling a slightly more technically difficult pattern, it's not difficult, but it's like more technically demanding, that I would make sure I had a fabric that would make like make it my life a little bit easier. Plus it will soften as it wears, so it will end up quite floaty. And the other reason is I, I should probably tell you my why. Not only do I want this in my wardrobe, I am attending and presenting at an international conference in July. And I, A, would really like a dress to wear and feel professional and feel confident and feel really good in and look good in photos. But also it's gonna be really hot and I run very warm. So I want a dress that is not obvious if I'm sweating 
and that I don't overheat in like stuffy lecture theatres and stuff in so I thought cotton was the way to go I am increasingly leaning towards more and more cotton garments because I really like how breathable they are um, so that is my reasoning I know a little bit different but why not I also got my buttons from so much more I didn't realise they did buttons so this is your sign to go buy some buttons I bought a number of buttons I can't remember what number but there they are the little navy ones so they are going to go all the way down the middle I thought darker was nice to be fair I didn't want to make too much of a feature of my buttons just in case I mess them up and then if I don't mess them up it's it's a lovely surprise but it's just less pressure on my head which I like so what is the plan for this video the Tamlin and I will talk about our fabrics i'll link her video as well below so you can see what she's going to make hers in what view she's going to make all her design decisions and then we will go away and we will make them and then we will reveal them at the end of june the conference i am going to is at the end of june so it works quite well i can show you it while i'm in the netherlands and then hopefully while i'm presenting in glasgow two weeks after i'll get some good photos in it as well I am nervous guys, I am nervous because as always when I'm sewing a new pattern that looks stunning on other people but also is long and ruched and has lots of layers, there is a bit of my brain going, you're going to look like a Jane Austen aunt, but I think the shea is the right type of pattern for me, it's got a low enough neck which for me always makes a bit of a difference, like just if you look at my body, I am five foot two but I'm petite luckily, so I am in proportion. But it means if I wear a very long dress with a very high neck, I have a tendency to look like a pepper pot, which I know sounds silly, but it's, it, it's, it just doesn't really work. Like you end up with a sort of hovercraft effect of being all dressed and it's sort of floating along the ground. It's fine if it's like slinky, that's fine because then you can still see that there's a person in there. Um, so I am a bit nervous because the closet called NYX did not work out how I wanted it to, but I feel a lot more confident in the chalk and notch pattern in the pattern drafting I've, I've made a lot of their patterns very successfully I mean the fringe I've got like three of I'm making as you guys know another Marcel um god this really is the month of chalk and notch actually because the two main things I'm making this month are both chalk and notch um but I have confidence in their pattern and the way it fits my body and I like the lower neck and I like the open sleeve of the tie I like the um, the layers, but it's also open a little bit at the bottom so you can actually move. Like, I think it's gonna be really good. I'm just trying not to get in my own head. I'm also really excited. I now have, I actually, oh my God, I have a full-sized ironing board. Guys, it's been too long. It's four years without a full-sized ironing board. It's driving me mad. Um, so I am delighted that I can actually iron this dress properly. And that sounds silly, but I'm working with three meters worth of fabric. I'm also doing stuff like pin tucks. I'm do I'm ironing gathers. So the deal is, I'm gonna I'm gonna take it seriously. I'm not gonna film making it because I want to concentrate and actually do it properly. But also, like with the full size ironing board, really being able to actually get around and take the time to iron my gathers and overlock everything and just because this, I I just want to feel professional. I want to feel pretty as well but not too young and I want to feel good the other reason I should say by the way I am going more ginger you will have noticed I've gone a little bit more ginger at the ends um but I want to go less sort of almost strawberry blonde type vibes and I'm doing that just before I go to conference and I think this will go really really nicely with sort of gingery hair so I think I'm really pretty I, I always forget to tell you what I'm going to do with my hair and then I pop up in a video and I'm like, whoops, sorry lads. Um, so yeah, I am really excited. It's going to be great. Make sure you go and watch Tamlin's video as well to see what she's going to be making and how and why. And um, well, I say what she's going to be making. Hopefully she's making the chalk and not shea. Um, but what she'll be making it with, what design choices she's making, how she's feeling about it. Um, I'm really, really excited to see. So thank you so much for watching. This is a short one because uh, I've got some sewing to go and do. So stay tuned and in about three weeks time I will be able to show you it. The final thing I need to say is that it's coming up for four years of So What If I Sew and I would really really like to film a new intro video for my YouTube and I'd like to do like a fun sort of Q&A. Um, you know my little video that if you go onto my channel it starts like playing. I made that years ago so there was something there. 
Um, but I'd love to do like a bit more of a Q&A and a bit more of a chat and stuff. So if you guys have questions, I would love you to send them in either on here or on Instagram and I'll compile them and I'll film like a fun sort of um, behind the scenes Q&A uh, next time I'm vlogging. And to, yeah, I just, I just want to celebrate four years. So if you've got questions, if you want me to talk about stuff, please do. And remember that the podcast is launching next week. So go follow the Instagram if you haven't already to stay up to date with all the exciting news. And I can't wait to bring you episode one of season two as well. So thank you guys so much for watching. See you next time.